licensed games are a tricky situation. Do you pour your heart and soul into creating the best representation of a series or franchise? Well, some do, but others, as this list will show, just use it for a quick buck. <clears throat> okay, maybe that's a bit harsh, but games on this list either miss the mark or don't come even close. I'm not normally negative, so I'm not as descriptive with negativity as others, but even I have my limits. So let's see what games are able to push it, and be considered my 10 least favorite licensed games. When I think of great licensed fighting games, my mind tends to go towards the Justice 2 or Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Then I remember Jump Force exists, and my mind gets kamehameha into the depths of sadness. And it's a shame, since I was really looking forward to exploring anime series like Naruto, Jojo, and Yu Yu Hakusho for the first time. I just wish it was a better time. The series combined to form Jump Force, an organization to fight against the Venoms, and a secret plot to merge all worlds into one. Yes, I am simplifying the plot into one single sentence, allow me to explain. Despite the cool looking presentation, it kinda hurts to see characters just stand around during cutscenes in a story that reeks of generic crossover storyline. It just feels like a story to explain why everyone is together and doesn't go farther than that, and unless you're a main character, you get a little side story and that's it. Sorry Yugi, I guess it just wasn't meant to be. The roster is massive, full of fan favorites, so you're sure to get hooked onto somebody. But it's a big might, even amongst the DLC characters that I guess you can't really get anymore. Whoops. But we're here for the fight, and they're... okay at best? It looks flashy like it should, each character having four special moves and an ultimate based on your energy meter. But you dash around hoping attacks would land, and maybe it's me not being used to 3D fighting games. But it took a long time to adjust, and even then, I wasn't really feeling it. Jump Force feels like a game for fans first, and newcomers last, since they don't really take the time to flesh anyone out, outside of what fans should already know. I'll admit, customizing your own anime character is fun, and thankfully the Yu-Gi-Oh characters, Yugi and Kaiba, were done so well. But it's a game I have no plans on coming back to. And seeing as how the game has been delisted on stores, I don't think anyone else will anytime soon. Unless you have a physical copy, but why go that far out of your way? This is more of a disappointment to me, since I loved Platinum Games, and hearing them combine efforts with the Heroes in a Half Shell? What could possibly go wrong? It did. Okay, the designs of the villains and bosses are amazing, and Shredder's boss theme is one of my favorite themes he ever had. And that's... everything positive to say without feeling mixed or let down. Levels are structured to finish various missions chosen randomly each playthrough. Finish enough of them, and the boss location is revealed to end the level. It can vary from beating enough enemies, to hacking bombs, and each time feels more of a drag than last. Each turtle can be equipped with different abilities, and once they charge, you're able to use them, from big attacks to support. But it sadly never feels fun after a while, even if you can upgrade them for better use. But the bosses, oh my the bosses, what did they do to you? All of them are damage sponges with super armor, occasionally breaking before getting right back up and continuing their massive hits. It's hard to say almost all of them aren't fun, Except Shredder, but perhaps that's my Oroku bias speaking. And when your quote unquote secret bosses amass the boss team ups, except the final boss, with Black Blaster collectibles, it makes you wonder why we would replay it. Oh, and uh, no local co op. At all. Thank goodness Shredder's Revenge was just so goddamn good. Go, go, Power Rangers! Don't you ever move on! <sighs> okay, so, yet again, Super Legends isn't awful, just painfully mediocre. Though, I know some love this game, so let me get into why I'm indifferent. 
Two rangers from several series team up to stop the evil Lord Zed from taking over time and ruling the galaxy. I wish it was more of a villain team up, save for towards the end of the story, but I hear the Nintendo DS version is a bit better on that front. I also kinda wish there was more series added. There isn't any Time Force, no Lightspeed Rescue, even Tommy Oliver, the most famous ranger, makes no appearance. And I wish I could say that's all of my uh, complaints, but um, we have an entry to get into. Gameplay revolves around basic platforming while battling enemies to reach the boss. And these bosses, wow, are they kind of bad. Dodging attacks and wait for them to laugh to deal damage while beating enemies each section. That is it for every boss fight. Oh, and don't get me started on the Megazord fights, which are all nothing but glorified quick time events. Gee, thanks. I always didn't want to control giant robots. No, truly, this is the best outcome. Gee, I hope you bring this back in the future. I was joking! I also kind of wish each ranger felt different from one another, but there's no standout moves to make them feel like themselves. All just glorified copies of one another. It just feels like each easy route was taken for this game. With other ranger games like Battle for the Grid, we're able to do so much better. I may have enjoyed this game as a kid, but now, it's not so more phenomenal anymore. Oh, my friend may hate me for putting this game here, but my list, my crush dreams, this game isn't fun, I said it! Uh, okay, is it completely bad? Uh, almost, but no. Though it does make many questionable choices. Like aside from two levels, the music is locked to your costume. And since you need a certain costume to complete objectives for each level, this... gets engraved into your brain for the rest of your sea life. Oh, and how many costumes are there? Four. So you can amass to about at least six tracks of music. Well, actually, no, not I think about it, I think it's eight, but less than ten. You know what I mean. But okay, what's the story? SpongeBob releases the Flying Dutchman and vows revenge by capturing SpongeBob's friends to be his crew. Go save. It's the end. It is nice to have all the voice cast return, except for the narrator, which I don't get. But last I checked, the Dutchman was a free roaming spirit, not some imprisoned ghost. Each hub level has nine tiles to collect, with the treasure obtained for finding all of them. It ranges from collecting jellyfish and doubloons to main missions like delivering Krabby Patties and clearing wasp nests. Unlike the game after this, Battle for Bikini Bottom, there's no clear direction to go for most missions, and with hub levels being as big as they are, it can lead to a problem. This feels more like a guide game than anything else, especially for levels like Goo Lagoon and Chum World. I'm sure as a kid you may have liked this game, but even I as a kid didn't like it, and I especially don't now. Sure, the game was rushed, but I can't really use that as an excuse. With a big presentation and confusing gameplay, I can only play this once if I really have to. Um, do yourself a favor, I may be a wish-granting genie, but please don't make me. Oh, hello, Champions of Destroya! We meet again. Unfortunately. The reveal of this game spoke volumes, with people wondering why the game even existed. Well, I mean, I don't know why, but man, what a slog to get through. You run around collecting power for special Bakugan attacks and hope they win. Completing missions for rewards and... Uh, and... Uh, this game is boring! Sure, the game is for kids, but that's truly no excuse. A ton of great games had kids in mind, but saying a bad game was just for kids so why complain, it's a pet peeve of mine, especially if a series I still hold to my heart. That being said, there's no voice acting whatsoever, the presentation just passes okay 
for a title exclusive to the Switch, and this game pales in comparison to the Bakugan games beforehand. Even Defenders of the Core managed to be great compared to this. I got bored so fast, I put it down and never looked back. Props to you if you even finished this game. Just one question. That whole battle system, you know, where one battle can last, oh, at least 10 minutes? Uh, yeah, just a question. HOW DO YOU MAKE BAKUGAN BORING?! HOW DO YOU EVEN ACCOMPLISH SUCH A THING?! <sighs> oh no, there's gonna be more entries like that, aren't there? Well, I guess I spoke too soon for the Just For Kids mentality, because up next is the LEGO Movie Part 2. While I haven't seen the movie, only getting the synopsis for this entry, I enjoy a good LEGO game every now and then, and I can list a bunch that I really do enjoy. This one sure isn't one of those. It barely follows the plot of the movie. You see recap style to tell it, but you won't really care since they somehow made LEGO gameplay lifeless. Unless the mission says so, any character can be used, since all abilities are tied to buildable gadgets and tools which all characters can use. This makes choosing your favorite character purely cosmetic, and every so-called puzzle comes down to using the tool which the game tells you nearly every time. It's mindless collecting everything which, oh yeah, no gold bricks, no red bricks, no bar for level completion like the past. Just purple bricks and... Loot boxes for cosmetics and items? This game feels rushed. It doesn't feel like a normal LEGO game, which is odd since the first LEGO movie did that very well. Normally doing something different isn't inherently bad, but when it's this drastic and it comes up with this result, that's an issue. It's hard to find enjoyment in this game compared to others in the franchise. If I'm trying to complete your game just so I never have to play it again, you know that's an issue. Huh. Maybe I should try Yakuza 6 again after this. I might owe an apology. Oh, and the bossics suck. Big shock. Ah! I hate this game. I hate it. Hate it. Hate it! HATE IT! LOATHE IT ENTIRELY! Okay, so, Omniverse 2, or as I call it, Omniverse Run, takes everything from past Ben 10 games and throws it into the Null Void! You're on an automatic path, changing between a few aliens you get to progress in levels and occasionally fight in bare-bones combat. It makes the levels hard on purpose, since without obstacles, they can be finished in just mere minutes. Sure, you can find alien upgrades throughout, but unless you happen to have the right alien at a time, oops, you need to start the level all over again just for a shot at it. It also doesn't help that Ben by himself can die in one hit, and other aliens lose their energy as they hit, which of course leads to Ben coming to Ben, leading to a hit, and oops, there you go, have fun doing the level again, buddy. Oh, and there's no checkpoints, if I didn't make that clear. Yeah. No checkpoints. <sighs> what even happened here? Combine all of that with truthfully off-putting presentations and one of the weakest stories in a Ben 10 game, just recapping two episodes from the Omniverse series, I take the original Ben 10 reboot game over this. If you happen to be a fan of Ben 10, first of all, hi, how are you? And second of all, avoid this game at all costs. I'd come up with a clever way to end this entry, but... Nah, I only have three entries left. Let's just end this pain train. You gotta love a good kart racer. They can be really fun, enjoyable, fulfilling... Nickelodeon kart racers is none of that. A weak race lineup with no unlockable characters, basic track designs for every track, forgettable music, and no voice acting, and, hmm, what do you need a licensed game that combines franchises? Oh yeah, representation! And guess what? THERE'S BARELY ANY OF THAT! Just Spongebob characters, Rugrats characters, Hey Arnold, and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's it! 
it's honestly relieving they got a second chance, and it did massively better, because a game of this quality would usually be a one and done otherwise. The only kind of cool thing is that vehicles transform to fit the terrain, but other racers do this so much better. So, it's not really saying much. There's not really much to this game overall, so I don't really feel like going into it any more than necessary. <sighs> so, the bronze medal goes to a weak kart racer. Can it get any worse? WHY?! HOW?! HOW DO YOU MESS IT UP THIS BAD?! I wasn't going to add game shows to the list, but this? Ho ho ho! This is easily the worst version of Jeopardy in video games. And it's somehow the most recent version! The presentation is completely lackluster. No set design like past games, Johnny Gilbert the announcer is only in the intro, and Alex Trebek, may he rest in peace, is nowhere in this game. Just a generic voice over to hold you the entire game. They don't even read the questions for you! Why can't you read the questions?! They say there's grace in simplicity. Actually, I think I made that phrase up. But, let's face it, sometimes simple is not the way to go. How did Ubisoft think this was okay? Even their version of Wheel of Fortune attempted to look like the show. For all it's worth. If you can, find any other version of Jeopardy, even back in the 8-bit era. It'd be a better time than this. Surely. <sighs> okay. One more entry. One more entry. Come on. I mean, what? We had a bad game show tie over, a bad kart racer. What could I. Oh, I think you know what number one is. Do I need to even explain? why this is number one. I mean, yeah, it's a countdown, so I kind of have to, but... Talk about a game that represents the pain of its dedicated fans. Why would you turn one of the most beloved superhero series in all video games into a bare-bones live-service shoot-'em-up? I have no idea whose decision it was, but it should have been scrapped the second it got hate and backlash. But nope, they stuck to their guns, no pun intended, they released it, and everyone wished they didn't. It makes a mockery of fan favorite characters, gameplay is a drag save for the okay traversal, and sure, characters may look great, but presentation can't save this game when even Arkham Knight looked better than it did nearly a decade ago. There's a lot of other issues, but so many people have gone into it, there's nothing more that I can add. All I can say is shame on WB for making this series life service, shame on the writers for butchering our favorite characters and offering them such disrespect, shame on the Suicide Squad, my new most disliked, no, you know what, no, my most hated licensed game of all time. And since Warner Brothers apparently wants to double down on live service, I wouldn't be surprised if I had to update this list for the future. I really hope I don't. I'm Zaldaz, the gaming genius, and next time, I'll be going over my favorite licensed games. Hey, I need to clean my sanity somehow. Thanks for joining me, and I hope to see you later. This gaming wish has just been granted. Have a good time, everybody.